Now let's look at how to solve this problem using classes. First, let's see how to declare and define a new class in C++. Then we will see what are the design considerations one need to think about when creating a new class. And finally, we will see how to overcome some of the challenges that we saw uh, without using classes to create our employee management system. So let's begin by declaration and definition of a class. To declare a new class, you will use the keyword class followed by a name. Since we are creating an employee management system, the name of our class will be employee. Now, within uh, braces, we will provide the body of a class. And then at the end, the semicolon uh, lets the compiler know that the declaration and definition is completed. Now, each class in C++ will hold data members and member variables, data members and member functions. The data members will be used to describe uh, our class object and the member functions will be used to access and modify these data members. So for example, with our employee class, we have four mem data members. These are name, position, location, and pay rate. So these me data members can be used to uh, uh, describe an employee. And the member functions now will be used to access and modify these data members. So for example, a member function can be get name, which will get the give, return the name of a name of an employee. Now, the first thing that one needs to think about when creating a new class is to um, choose which member functions and member variables should be accessible from outside the class and which member functions and member variables should be hidden from outside the class. Now, to do this, you can use access specifiers in C++. There are three access specifiers in C++, public, private, and protected. Public is the least restrictive access specifier. Protected is in between and private is the most restrictive access specifier. So any data member and me member function that is declared as private cannot be accessed directly from outside the class. They can be only accessed within the class using some member functions that are public. So for example, here I'm creating four data members which are all private. So the syntax is first we specify the access specifier name followed by a colon and then every uh, data member and member function that is declared after that until a new access specifier is provided will have the previous access specifier. So from line 15 to line 18 all the member variables that were declared will have access specifier private. Now since we are declaring a new access specifier in line 20 everything that follows it will have public access. That is they can be accessed directly from outside the class using an instance of an uh, instance or an object of our class. Now each class in C++ will have uh, a few inbuilt member functions. These member functions are provided to us by default uh, by the compiler. So we have a choice of either using the default versions of these member functions or we can overload them and provide our own versions of these member functions. Now these member functions are constructors and destructors. Constructors are member functions that will be used to construct a new instance on an object of our class. Destructor is a member function that will be used to destroy our uh, objects. Now, there are three types of constructors in C++. The first and the easiest one is the default constructor. The syntax for default constructor is as follows. First, we write the name of the class followed by parenthesis. Now, the parenthesis doesn't have any uh, parameters, so a default constructor will have no parameters passed. And within the body of this default constructor, usually the body is empty. Here I'm just pro writing a cout statement that says that the default constructor was called. So now when we go to the main program and start creating new objects of our employee class, we will see when uh, this default constructor will be called. So the syntax when a default constructor will be called is as follows. When we write employee followed by uh, a variable name in the main function, we will use default constructor to construct this object. So employee now is the data type, E is the variable name. And uh, since we are just following a semicolon after the variable name, a default constructor will be used to construct this object. Now, the second way of constructing an object is by using a parameterized constructor. The parameterized constructor will allow us to pass some parameters that can be used to initialize our member variables. Now, suppose I want to create a new employee whose name, position, location, and salary is known. I can use the parameterized constructor 
to let the constructor know that the name of the employee, position, location, and salary of the employee. And these parameters can then be used to initialize our member variables. So for example, in line 27, we're declaring the parameter as constructor. All constructors will begin with the name of the class. Name of the class here is employee. Within parentheses, I'm passing four parameters. All of them are const references. And I'm using syntax called as member initialization to initialize the member variables. Now the syntax is pretty simple. Once the attributes or parameters are uh, declared, you can write a colon followed by uh, names of the member variables that we want to initialize and within parentheses the parameter that will be used to initialize the member variable. Now if we can use comma to separate initialization of different member variables. So since I have four uh, attributes that are declared within this class, I will initialize each of those four uh, attributes by separating it with a comma. Now it's important to follow the same order in which these data members were declared. Notice name was the first data member that was declared in this class, then position, location, and pay rate. And when we initialize these member variables, we will initialize them in the same order. If we don't initialize them in the same order, we will just get a compiler warning. It's not an error, but we will get a compiler warning. Now again, within this body of the parameterized constructor, I'm printing that the parameterized constructor was called. So that from the main, we will know when this constructor is called. Now the last way of constructing an object uh, of our class is by using a copy constructor. Now a copy constructor has a special constraint. A copy constructor needs an object or an instance of our class to be already existing in memory. And we will use this existing object to initialize the newly created object. So there are multiple things happening. First, we will create a new object and then we will use an existing object of the same type of our class to initialize our new object. So the syntax is as follows. First, we will write employee, which is the name of our class. Since this is the constructor, it always begins with the name of the class. And within parentheses, I provide only one argument. The parameter now is also of type employee. Now notice I'm passing it as a reference, const reference. Const this because this is a read only. We will read only its attributes to initialize the new member variable new new instance of our class and it's a reference because we only want it to be an alias for an existing instance or an object of our class we don't want to create a new temporary copy now the syntax uh, uh, that will call a copy constructor is as follows so here i'm declaring a variable called e1 it's of type employee and you're initializing it with the variable e which is already created now E is also of type employee and E1 is the new variable or new employee that is being created. Now the other reference here is an alias to this variable E. So E is already existing in memory, other is just an alias, we will use other to initialize our newly constructed object E1. Now again we can use the parameter uh, list or the member initialization syntax to initialize our member variables. Now all I'm doing is I'm using the attributes of this other employee to initialize my new employee. Now to access member variables or member functions from an object or an instance of a class, we can use the dot operator. So object dot name or object dot function is the syntax to use the access the name or the member function from an object. So here I want to initialize the name of my new employee using the name of the other employee. So the syntax is other dot name. Similar to parameterized constructor, you can write name is equal to other dot name within the body of this copy constructor. But the preferred way of doing it in C++ is by using the member initialization list. Now within the body of this constructor, I'm calling, I'm uh, printing that the copy constructor is called. This will be important. We will see what are the instances uh, when copy constructor will be called from the main function. Sometimes it can be surprising. We will not be expecting a copy constructor to be called. So by adding this print statement, uh, since this is our first example of a class in C++, we will see when the copy constructor will be called from the main. Now the, the last default 
member function that is provided to you by the compiler is a copy assignment operator. The copy assignment method is needed to write statements like E1 is equal to E. Now both E1 and E are objects that are already constructed, so they're already in memory. And all I want to do is copy the contents of E into the object E1. Now to do this, we need to say how to copy to employee objects. Notice with inbuilt data types, we don't need to provide how to do this. So for example, I have two doubles and I want to write A is equal to B where both are doubles. I don't need to tell the compiler what the equal to operator should do. But with inbuilt or user defined objects, we need to tell the compiler how to copy these objects. Now a compiler will provide a default version as I mentioned before, so we don't need to actually write this. But suppose we have some fancy things that we're doing with our class and we want to overwrite it. This is the syntax. Now to overload an operator, the syntax is as follows. First, the name of the function uh, has a fixed part. So it always begins with an operator. And then we provide the operator that we were trying to overload. Here I'm trying to overload the assignment operator. So the name of the function is operator equal to. Now within parentheses, we can provide a parameter. The parameter usually is the operand for this operator. So the operand for the operator equal to here are uh, E and E1. So since we are working with classes, we can implicitly use something called as a this pointer to point to one of our operands. So this pointer is a special keyword that is reserved in C++ that is used to point to an instance or an object of a class. So for example, here, when we write statement like E1 is equal to E, this pointer will be pointing to the object E1. So since it's a pointer, it, it stores a memory location. And here in this case, it will store the memory location in which this object E1 is saved in memory. Now the other operand in this uh, statement is E, and we can pass this uh, second operand using the parameter to our function. So here I'm taking a const reference to an employee. So other is just an alias to this member variable E. So let me write this. Other is alias to E and this will point to E1. So usually the, this pointer will point to whatever is on the left hand side, left hand oper operand. And the right hand operand is the parameter that is passed to the overloaded function. Now, the written type is again in, in reference to an employee. So we want to use this other, which is alias to E, to initialize E1, and then we will return back E1. Now, within this uh, assignment, copy assignment, I'm printing that the copy assignment is called. And then first we will check whether we are doing self assignment or not. So suppose I write a statement which is E1 equal to E1. I don't want to do any work in this copy assignment uh, method. So I don't want to rewrite the same object using the same object. To avoid that, we can use this if condition, which first checks whether this and other are different. Only if there are two different objects, we will initialize uh, our member variables using the other object. So again, the syntax is the same. I will use other dot name to access the name of the other employee and initialize our employee or reset our employee using the name of the other employee. At the end of this function, we will return the object back. So this is the pointer. We will use the dereference operator to get the object from the, this pointer and return it back to the caller. So this concludes the copy constructor and copy assignment. Again, they are provided by default by the compiler. So you don't have to create them in your own classes. But it's good to know how to write these uh, yourself. So suppose you need to overload them, then you can use the syntax that I've shown you to create your own versions. Now, the last thing that the compiler provides us is the destructor. So destructor is a method that is used to destroy our objects. Now here, the syntax is pretty simple. You have a tilde followed by the name of your class, and then you don't pass any arguments to this method. Now within the body of the destructor, usually you will write code that will be used to destroy some uh, memory that you've allocated within your class. Since I'm using only inbuilt data types to describe the employee, 
which is string in integer i don't need to destroy anything within my destructor so here in my destructor i'm only printing what the destructor was called so that from the main we will know when objects are created and destroyed 